iOS comes with a number of options for generating haptic feedback, and they're all available for us to use inside SwiftUI. In its simplest option, we can just create a subclass of UI feedback generator and then trigger it when ready. But for more precise control, we can also prepare our feedback to synchronize it more accurately with the effect actually happening. Now, warming up the engine in this way, the underlying iPhone Taptic engine is great because doing so will reduce the latency between us saying play and it actually feeling a buzz in our hands. It'll be much, much closer, if not instant. On the flip side, there is a battery performance hit here. If you say prepare and then don't use it, you're wasting the extra energy you could have otherwise used on you know, screen time or networking or who knows what. Now, there are a few different subclasses of UI feedback generator, but the one we're going to use is called UI notification feedback generator. It has built-in success and error buzzes we can work with that are standard across all of iOS. Now, we could try and make one centralized feedback generator inside content view here, but that wouldn't work too well because I'm getting haptic feedback from my dog that you want to treat right now. So uh, there you go. Your haptics work. That's a UI feedback notification generator right there. Dot treat. There we go. Um, because it wouldn't work because this thing knows when we've got to remove a card. It's our remove card call right here. That's triggered we want to remove a card from our stack. But it isn't notified when a drag begins. And so, yes, we can say to trigger a, a buzz effect in the, in the hand, a vibration, but we can't prepare that ahead of time to remove the latency. So instead, we're going to give card view its own feedback generator, which would be unique to each card, and that's perfectly fine. And so we'll say in card view, there's a new property, at state, private var feedback is a UI notification feedback generator, like that. And now we want to find the call to the removal closure down here and change this. So we play one of two effects depending on which direction they drag because if offset width is greater than zero, it means they guessed this card correctly. They are happy they knew the answer to this question. And so we can say uh, feedback dot notification occurred dot success like that. Play a success tap in their hand. Otherwise, try to type one handed. Um, we'll do feedback dot notification occurred dot error. Whoops, you got it wrong. And that alone will get haptics in our app. You can go ahead and try it now if you want to. Uh, obviously, don't use a simulator because your iMac won't buzz in your hand. Um, deploy to a real device, but you'll feel the actual feedback in your hand now. There is, of course, the risk that there'd be a delay in warming up the Taptic engine ready to play your effects. Um, in this case, the tap successful error will still play, but could be perhaps half a second or so maybe behind the visual effects. So there's a bit of a lag from our, our UI. It might make the user feel a bit disconnected perhaps in our UI. To improve this, to get zero latency, we want to warm up our feedback, to prepare it for being triggered. And you can do this whenever you want to before preparing, but don't do it immediately before. Like, don't try and do it like here, directly before calling notification occurred. That won't work. It needs a little bit of time to get warmed up. And so we're going to put it somewhere else. Now, there are two implementation details you need to know, two pieces of information you've got to know to make, make this really work. First, it is okay to prepare your haptic effect then never trigger the effect. That's fine. The system will keep the Taptic engine warmed up, ready to go for a few seconds, and then just power it down again. I'm ready, didn't use it, fine, turn it off again, that's it. If you repeatedly call prepare and never trigger the effect, then fine, the system might stop preparing it. It might slightly go, yeah, it's ready, it isn't really ready. Um, and that'll be fine, because you weren't using it anyway, but the next time you do call play, it'll reset the back to normal behavior again. So it kind of trusts you more when you finally call play. Second, it's perfectly allowable to call prepare multiple times, as many times as you want to. Calling prepare will not pause your app while the Taptic engine warms up. It'll just spin on and carry on in the background ready to go. And so if, you're, if you call prepare and the engine was already warmed up, it'll do nothing at all. It's already warmed up, it's all prepared, don't worry about it. 
<laughs> putting these two together, people will think you're really, really hungry. Like, I'm somehow not feeding you enough. Yeah, you. Um, putting these two together, what we'll find is that we're going to make our drag gesture on changed code here. This will cause our haptic to prepare. And that'll be triggered many, many times. When they drag around the finger on the screen, we'll call prepare on the hat because it's always going to be ready. And that's fine. And it'll call 100 times or so, and then finally call notification occurred right here, when they finally go to one side. And that's fine. So in here, we'll say store offset, that's fine. But then we'll call feedback.prepare. Get ready for playback. Now go ahead and give the app a try on a device again. See what you think, because you can probably feel both haptics, success and error working really, really nicely now, depending on which direction you swipe. Now, before we wrap up with haptics, I want to leave one extra thought in your mind. A while ago now, uh, there was a very famous challenge by PepsiCo called the Pepsi Challenge, and it challenged shoppers in random malls to take two sips out of cups. One had an unnamed co uh, cola in, and the other had a different unnamed cola in, and they were asked which one they preferred. And behind the scenes, one was Coke, one was Pepsi, and shoppers mostly chose Pepsi. They said, of the two, blind taste test, I prefer to have Pepsi. And this was interesting. People went, oh, clearly Pepsi's better than Coke. But there was a problem, which is that people seem to pick Pepsi in the test because it has a sweeter taste. And in small amounts, they go, hmm, this is a bit sweeter. It's nicer in small amounts. They preferred Pepsi. But then in large amounts, drinking a whole can or a whole bottle, they preferred the slightly less sweet Coke. Now, this is not some massive tangent. This is related here. We've just added haptic notifications to our app. They get played a lot. Every card you swipe left or right now will go buzz in different ways. And that might feel great when you're testing things out in small doses. One or two cards, it feels fantastic. But serious users of the app will hit two problems. First up, the user might find them very annoying because it'll happen once every two or three seconds, perhaps hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times while they're using an app in a single run. And second, the user might become desensitized. They might lose all usefulness as a way of sparking delight. It just goes away and becomes useless. And so now you've tried it yourself, I want you to think about the long-term impact of having these haptics in your app. Should they stay there? And if this were my app, I'd probably keep the error one. It feels good, it feels nice, like this is a good thing to have in there, you've made a mistake, whoops. But the success one is the one that we played the most ideally. And so I'd probably remove that one entirely and just say something like, if this is less than zero, play that, otherwise do nothing at all. Uh, and then do the same up here, of course, around that and if as well. And that way, the error haptic feels a little bit more special because haptics are less common.